indirect measurement using trigonometry and making a clinometer. This is 8.4b, and if you've missed the previous nine videos for Chapter 8, they're in the geometry playlist linked in the description. A clinometer is a surveying tool that's used to measure angles of elevation and angles of depression. And here's a digital one, here's a manual one, and if you go on the internet and look for images of clinometers, you're going to see many different types, but they all basically do the same thing. We can make our own simple clinometer and use it to find indirect measurements. So we're going to need five things. We're going to need a drinking straw or an empty pen tube, like an empty Bic pen. We're going to need some scotch tape, a protractor, about six inches of string, and a small weight, like a paper clip or a metal washer. We tie that washer or paper clip to the end of the six inch string. We tape or tie the other end to the midpoint of the straight edge of the protractor. You could put it through that little hole in the center, couldn't you? We tape a drinking straw along the straight edge of the protractor or that pen tube. Okay. Now we've made a simple clinometer and we can use it to measure an angle of elevation or an angle of depression. And we did this in the last video. For the bird to look at the woman from this horizontal line, that would be our angle of depression. And from the woman looking at the bird, we have this horizontal line, that's the angle of elevation. Okay? So choose a tall object like a flagpole, a tree, or the roof of a house or a building. We stand back from the object we want to measure, and we use a tape measure or some type of measure to measure the horizontal distance from our feet to the base of the object. We also measure the height of our eyes above the ground. Now in some videos you might see this called L or A or something else, and you know that might be called a D. As long as you know what they stand for, it doesn't matter what the letters in the formula are that you're using, okay? We hold our clinometer steady and look through the straw to sight the top of the object. Okay? And the string is going to be swaying and moving, and when it settles down, put your finger on the string and pinch it against the protractor and record the acute angle measure. The angle reading from the clinometer is the complement of the angle of elevation. So if we're looking through the tube or the straw and it, the string is at 40 degrees, well then the an angle of elevation is 50 degrees, okay? Because remember, complements are a sum of 90 degrees. And we can use this method to measure the height of tall objects that can't be measured directly. So we're doing an indirect measurement. And geologists can use a clinometer to, de to determine the height of an object like a tree, a mountain, or a cliff by using the formula, the entire height, is equal to the height of the clinometer to the ground plus the distance of the clinometer to the object multiplied by the tangent of the angle taken from the clinometer reading. Okay? So using this information, we're going to pretend like the string is at 40 degrees on her protractor. Okay? So this lowercase h is going to be the height from eye level to the top of the flagpole. Okay? Right here. The script L is going to be the height from eye level to ground. Our red capital H is going to be the entire flagpole. And D is going to be our horizontal distance along the ground. So the height of the entire flagpole is equal to that eye level height plus the tangent of 50 degrees times that distance. So that's going to be times 30. When we do inside the brackets, we get 35.75. We add that 5 feet for this part of the flagpole to get the whole thing, and we find that it's approximately 40.75 feet for the flagpole height. On your calculator, you can hit 50 tangent multiplied 30 equals plus that extra 5 feet right here. You can also do the plus before this equal sign here, okay? And finding the height of a cliff, we use the complement of the angle of depression. So this is the exact same thing. The only difference is we're going to be subtracting this 5 feet, aren't we, to find the height for the lowercase h of the cliff, OK? And you might see clinometers called a slope gauge, an inclinometer, a level gauge, or a tilt meter, or a gauge me tilt gauge. And the tilt meter tilt gauge is when they're using it to find shifts in the ground. 
okay? Our next lesson is finding trig ratios for obtuse angles. That's 8.5a. Then we're going to do the law of sines and the law of cosines to finish up 8.5 before we move on to vectors, okay? So, you can try making your own clinometer, okay? Just make it look like this, all right? And then go outside and see if you can find a tall object and figure out what its height is, okay? So remember you have to measure the horizontal distance between you and the object and remember that it's going to be the, the complement of the angle, okay, of elevation. I hope you have a great day. Keep trying. I'm proud of you and I'll see you next time. And hit that like button for me. It helps me out on YouTube's algorithm. Bye.